think it's time for Scott. Okay, so I will read the therefores first. Thank uh, you. Yes, therefore, be it resolved that the Washington State Progressive Caucus supports transitioning to a primary as a determining step in allocating presidential delegates and call on state committee members to vote accordingly at the April 2019 State Central Committee meeting. Um, so I br I'm bringing this resolution uh, because as all of us progressives know, uh, and polling by Data for Progress has proven that a majority of Americans support progressive priorities like raising the minimum wage, uh, Medicare for all, and the Green New Deal. Um, I think that by using a primary for delegate allocation, we will uh, make our presidential nomination more accessible and bring these voters into the political process as we have pledged to do in our bylaws. Um, Additionally, by using a state-run primary, we'll free up progressive volunteers and party resources to spend time educating voters about progressive candidates and issues rather than running an unwieldy, though improved caucus process. And um, this caucus and others have advocated for getting rid of superdelegates in order to return our presidential nominating process to the people. I think moving to a primary is a continuation of this work and uh, I ask you all for your support of this resolution. Thanks. Thank you. Great. That all right, so everyone can see that therefore be it resolved that the Washington State Progressive Caucus supports transitioning to a primary as the determining step in allocating presidential delegates and a call on all state committee members to vote accordingly at the April 2019 State Central Committee meeting. Uh, and in addition, you got to hear Scott Alsbach talk about why he supports this. Do we have anyone who, excuse me, would like to speak against this resolution. All right, so first up speaking against will be Joanne Fleming. Joanne, can we unmute Joanne? Joanne, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So um, there are many, many reasons why I would like to speak against this. One of the primary reasons is um, the caucus improvement committee's report was only emailed out to committee members about a week ago. Um, the presentation that was given in January to the, to the body was those of you who were there, you know it was a disaster. Um, the facts about the improved caucus process and everything that it, that goes around it have not been, we haven't had an opportunity to even present anything. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's been a lot of fear mongering. And there are some legitimately hurt feelings left over from 2016. I get it. We all get it. Um, there's not been an even playing field for the caucus process and the primary process, whichever, for both of them to be looked at fairly and evenly. And um, resolutions like this just hurt for a level playing field. And if we're nothing else, the Democratic Party should allow its members a level playing field when we're presenting major changes to the structure of our party this is the vetting of our presidential nominee. It's a big deal. We are currently the largest, from a delegate standpoint, we are the largest caucus state in the United States. And we have a major impact from that perspective. We have an opportunity to maintain that status and because of the fear mongering and because of the very unlevel playing field um, that has been in place since day one, um, we have not had an opportunity to present a, a fair, a fair. Okay. Joanne, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I hate to interrupt you. I'm sorry. I didn't know how no, much no. time I had. So yeah, so that we were going to give a minute, but I gave you two and I'm going to give the next that. Person. Oh, no, thank, thank you. you. And I'm going to give the next person two minutes as well. And that person is uh, Sherry Feld. So Sherry Feld, you are, you are speaking in support of the resolution and I will give you two minutes as well starting now. Hi, um, <clears throat> uh, the caucus uh, has served its purpose. It's time for us to move on. This is a, um, uh, 
sorry, I'm not very good at this. Um, I, I, for me, the caucus is very undemocratic. It restricts access to so many people. We, we, one of the things that happens is because we have a, a state primary, it's really confusing. People get all of their ballots in the mail. We have this fantastic mail-in system and people don't understand why the Democrats don't use it. And, and I think that uh, the Democratic Party, our state Democratic Party is losing support for that because of that, because there are two, the state Democratic Party is too invested in keeping their power uh, over how this process, how the nomination process is run. Um, I equate it to the way the Electoral College, how they don't trust us people to just vote for the president. So we have the Electoral College and, and this is how I see the caucuses here. Um, I, I go to the caucuses. I'm one of the kind of people who enjoy it. I love the discussion. I love the shouting. I love all of that kind of stuff. But I am, and all of us that like it, we are in a really small minority. And I think it's very undemocratic of us to not listen to all the other people out there who identify as Democrat or who vote as Democrat. Um, the, the other, I don't know how much time I have left. You have 15 seconds. The improved caucus system, I admire the effort in it, but it's really just trying to replicate the much better mail-in system that we already have. If that system trying to give people uh, opportunity to vote absentee, then then we should. Do and that. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay. Yeah. One more. Do we have one more against? I would. I think Justin is trying. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right. Thank you, Justin Baird. Go ahead. You have you have two minutes. I'm giving. George Georgia wants to reach into a computer. I'm going to reach over to Kaoki's desk. Well, the one thing I want to make sure we understand is that you can't judge what's happening, what, uh, all of this based on 2016. 2016 was not a good example. We had basically two candidates. We're looking at anywhere from 12 to 16 candidates. And the process the state party has put through right now is being packaged as if it's more democracy when in fact almost all of the issues we ran into in the LD caucuses, mind you, the LD caucuses are not gonna go away, just the precinct caucus. All of those issues have been addressed with, with the improvements with being able to go online and be able to do this as an absentee. Those people who are the most motivated and most active would be going to the caucus. Now the state party, however, is trying to look at the better involvement through a primary, but really it's all about making sure that we don't have grassroots activists anymore. What we have is huge media money that's able to buy out statewide ads and trump any small players involved. I would trust this process more if it had been more inclusive and it included more people in the, in the, uh, in the affected areas. But in fact, it's been kept until the very last minute and then packaged at the last minute for a polling. So let me give you an example of some of the issues that we would run into here. 45 seconds. Right now we have 12 to 16 candidates and under the rules of, under the primary, if one person gets 15%, 85% of the state did not vote for them, but the other 12 to 16 get under 15%, guess who gets all 101 of our delegates? That one candidate who got 15%. Whereas with a caucus, you have a chance to talk to your neighbors and coordinate and start to shift and bring forward consensus candidates. So until they can bring in RCV, we do not need to be looking at a primary in 2020. Maybe look at it again in 2024 after all the stakeholders have been included. But to throw this through with the possibility that we could have a Hinkenlooper or someone else who we don't like as our sole delegate um, selection is not acceptable to me. And time. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, so we've had two for, two against. I'm not seeing another one for. So debate. Debate on this is ended. Uh, is, so can, can I ask a question, Kaoki? Sure, yeah, yeah. Because um, Sherry brought up an accessibility issue and I don't, and, and, and you know, there wasn't time to address that. And, and I think it would be worth making the point that accessibility issues have been resolved with this caucus. There is actually no more or less accessibility with this caucus than there is to a primary at all. 
So, you know, yeah. I think the point needs to be made. I, and, okay. I only, and I only say that because if somebody says something that they are believing is fact, I think it needs to be, you know, Great. refuted. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jason. And, and once again, I, as I can see, this is, uh, this is a great debate and we need to move it over to the Facebook page. Uh, because remember, this is going to go to the body and the body will be voting for it. Right now, we're gonna move from uh, debate to any amendments that we need, anyone sees. Um, so I'm gonna open that up. D does anyone have an amendment that they'd like to put to this resolution? I am seeing none. Uh, and once again, so uh, debate is over. There are no amendments to this resolution. The uh, resolution will go forth to our membership as is and people can continue to debate it. I heartily suggest once again that we have a vigorous debate on the Washington State Progressive Caucus Facebook page um, and we can talk about accessibility and all that. Thank you very, very much everyone for keeping it civil and to the point. Moving on to the next resolution. This is the resolution to use the improved full caucus beginning with 2020 election and the presenter will be Justin Baird. And Justin, you have a minute for the therefores. Okay, so I think, I think the, the point that, we've, we, that we're doing the same conversation over again, I just wanna point out the fact that, that there is a lot of sales pitches on the primary that have been skipping by one, all of the limitations of the primary that I've discussed and do not talk about the improvements for accessibility, which make it so that if you want to go, you can. If you uh, do not wish to, you can simply uh, go on to a, what's called a dem account and take part online. And you can do that as an absentee as well. So we have been, all of those questions have been answered as far as accessibility. And, the, and we have always, valued our independence and one of the concerns I have is that when we have a precinct caucus we end up bringing in tons of new volunteers we bring in tons of, of donations to the local LPOs which will be gone then instead of that we're going to be and, and that's data we don't have to pay for there's hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of data that we acquire during those precinct caucus moments we will have to buy that data if we're in a primary at the same point, because the Republicans will have access to who voted, they will get access to the names of the people who voted in the primary. And they, all they have to do is take those names of their GOP people out of it, and they will have a targeted list of Democrats to go after. I, I'm not in favor at all of giving our data over to the GOP. I think we need to keep our, our nominating process within the Democratic Party, and we can do that through the Improved Caucus. All right, great. And your reading of the therefore. My resolve Just, is my resolve is simply that we, the Washington State Progressive Caucus, call on the Washington State Democratic Central Committee to vote to use the improved full caucus beginning with the 2020 presidential election cycle. Great, thank you. And who will whoever has any background noise, can we mute that? Thank you. All right. So we have it up here. Resolution is up. Georgia will be able to do the edits. Uh, Justin was the first four. Do I have anybody speaking against this resolution? So Justin spoke four, and I have one sp person speaking against. That is Scott Allspock. Allspock. Yes, very close. <laughs> oh, thank you. Allspa, yeah. Allspa. All right, yes. and then. All right, so go ahead, go ahead, Scott. Okay, yeah, thanks. Um, so while I really appreciate all of the work that's gone into the improved caucus system, I, I personally don't think that it's ready for prime time um, and to, uh, to replace, I think the state run primary is, is just gonna be much more accessible uh, to everyone. They will receive a ballot in their mailbox when they're registered to vote. They don't have to go find us. Um, I'm concerned about the whereas clause in this resolution that says party leaders have more influence in a caucus setting. I don't think that that's a progressive value. I think we want grassroots and not not the party dictating things. Um, and I 
I'm concerned about the Progressive Caucus, uh, or yes, our Progressive Caucus um, being the only, I think we're going to move to a primary uh, at the state level. I, I do think this central committee will, will vote for a primary and I'm concerned that the Progressive Caucus um, is going to be the only one standing against what a lot of people see as more accessible system. Okay. Um, that's my minute. I'm, we had two people, Kate Moran and Joanne Fleming, but since Joanne Fleming got to speak at the last one, I'm going to let Kate Moran have her. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. So Kate, go ahead. So something that recently was in the newspaper is that the chair of the government and I believe rules committee, if I remember correctly for the Senate, uh, Scott Hunt has said that if the Democrats do not use the primary, then he will move to remove the primary being used for the presidential election since the GOP is not putting forth any other candidates and may not even be able to put forth their only candidate for the primary. If that's the case, the state will save $12 million and it will give us all of the opportunity and free ways to go in front of the camera and explain exactly how the caucus is going to work for the precinct. Not only that, but it's also going to allow because of the absentee balloting, it's going to allow more people to participate. All they have to do is they go online, they register, and then they'll be able to, once they get their pin, if that's the way we're going to be doing it, then after that, they'll be able to vote. Not only that, but all of that data is going to go to the Democratic Party, and that's it. The Republican Party cannot get any of that data. If we use the primary, the Republican Party gets data. And as Tina is always saying, data is key. Data is what we want, and it is the money. And we need the money. Not only that, but we need the people. And caucuses are a way to get people. I would never have been involved in the Democratic Party because I never knew it existed near me, except for when I went to the precinct caucus. And I really think that one thing people are forgetting is that no matter what, we're still going to do everything other than the precinct caucus. For instance, the LD caucus, and that is the one people normally remember as being the worst because it took forever, it took all day. And if we use the precinct caucus, we will know exactly how many people are going to be at the LD. If we use the primary for delegate allocation, then we do not know who's going to show up to the LD. Could be five people, could only be party insiders, could be everybody and their mother. All right, so next up, we have one person who is against the resolution. That is Sherry Feld. Sherry, um, you will have two minutes as well. Are you ready? Ready to help you. <laughs> All right, go for it. Um, so yes, the data uh, for the primary on your preference is public. And that the, um, not that I'm a Republican, but the Republicans in the legislature uh, this session they actually had an amendment to make it private, but the Democrats uh, killed that amendment to keep it public. So uh, I feel like that that is a really important piece that needs to be addressed, um, but it can be fixed. It also, uh, I, I think when you go to a caucus, you still have to sign a box and sign in and say that you identify as Democrat in order to participate in a recent caucus. Uh, so either way, the way the primary is right now, the way the caucus is right now, uh, there are people such as uh, like judges or journalists that cover politics that are not allowed to vote in a primary where their preference can be public. So that's an issue that needs to be fixed on both sides. Um, the access issue, I still want to re reiterate, signing up online for a ballot is not the same as getting one in your mail. So that really does affect this, its accessibility. Mail-in ballot also um, uh, reaches people who don't have an address. There are, uh, there are ways that they can get a ballot that I don't think has been addressed yet. It's really expensive uh, for the party to do this. And I, and I think our fundraising should go for uh, education, voter education, uh, promoting our, our values, our policies, and our best candidates. And I don't want our caucus to end up going the way the Republicans and the Republicans don't have a caucus anymore is because of the Pat Robertson fiasco and that could happen to us someday. I don't want to go there. All right, thank you. Thank you. Ah, everybody's doing great. So the next person up will be uh, Joanne Fleming. Joanne, you have two minutes.
you who know me know that, right. all of you who know me know that. Um, Karen Hardy, who ran for Senate in 2017 and again this last year, is in the seventh legislative district. We are in Eastern Washington where it's pretty red, in case you didn't know. Um, when I walked into Rogers High School cafeteria in 2016, it was the first time I'd ever participated in anything politically ever. And to see 800 people that thought like me was life changing. I didn't know that those people existed in Spokane, let alone in my neighborhood. Karen Hardy ran for Senate because she walked into a room in Chewila and went, oh my God, there's Democrats in my district. We don't have the opportunity to be around like-minded people or even know that they exist in Eastern Washington without the caucuses. There are so many people, almost every single person who is still involved at any level in Spokane and in Eastern Washington in general came out of the 2016 or 2008 caucuses, but primarily 2016. So um, there are values to caucuses that are hard to quantify for people that live in areas that are heavily progressive. Um, we are not. And so to be able to understand that we have local support is critical, not only from feeling supported, but from recruiting people to get involved and to create change. And Karen Hardy ran for Senate. And now look what she's doing. She's great. She's in the party. She's helping us out. So um, I think that we have an opportunity to maintain um, and, and, and in, increase that, that level of involvement. So just a little emotional plea to those of us in Eastern Washington that need this badly. That's all, thank you. All right, thank you, Joanne Fleming. Great, all right, debate is now over. Moving on to amendments. Are there any, is there anyone who would like to make an amendment to this resolution? Seeing none, this amendment stands as is. Thank you everyone and thank you for your patience. Now, uh, next up on the agenda is voting instructions. And once, once again, I, I would like to defer to Justin Baird uh, who can explain these voting instructions better than I can since he set, set it up. Can you, can you explain the voting instructions, Justin? It'll be prepared to go out as a survey monkey uh, ballot, a, a poll. And it'll be just a yes or no on each of the resolutions that we have passed through for vote. Right. Oh, and they will, oh, and they will have until 11 a.m. on Tuesday. I should add that this does give people, if they want, opportunity to discuss it because you can vote on it and then you can go back into your survey monkey and change your vote if you choose to prior to the deadline for voting at 11 o'clock on Tuesday. Great. Does anyone have any questions for Justin about how we're voting for these resolutions? I have a couple questions. Uh, what was, uh, this is name? Scott. Sorry, Scott oh, Oswald. Scott. All right, Scott Oswald, you have questions. Uh, take it, go yeah. ahead, what are your questions? Um, the first one is hopefully easy. How will the results be sent out? Will we see the vote totals? You'll see um, the vote. Yeah, you'll see the vote totals. I, there's also um, some wonderful graphics that'll show like the percentage and that kind of thing. Okay, uh, that's great, thanks. And then my other question goes to the caucus and primary resolutions. Um, I'm just wondering, it seems very unlikely to me that both would pass by some way. Uh, are we, but if they, if that were to happen through some fluke of, of whatever, that, that would seem to be an issue. Do, is, is, do, do we want to consider setting vote for one, either or, or neither on, in that case? Um, okay. Okay, Joanne says she's second, so I will make that motion. All right, so Joanne Fleming is making a, is seconding that motion. Can you state that motion clearly once yes. again? Okay. Yeah, I move that we present the voting options to the membership as the resolution in favor of a primary, the resolution in favor of the caucus, or neither uh, uh, resolution as three options that people can uh, decide between. Okay. 
Move to present the voting options to the membership as in favor of a primary, in favor of a caucus, or neither. Is that accurate? Yes. We are voting yay to move to present the voting options to the membership as in favor of a primary, in favor of a caucus, or neither. If you're voting yes, please do so now. Uh, those not in favor, please vote no now. We have 15 yeas, eight noes. All right, so we are amending the, uh, the question, uh, the voting option. Great, moving on. Thank you, everyone.